Two of the major trends driving CSP transformation at the moment are automation and the move towards being cloud native. Diego, good to see you again on Telecom TV. Thanks for joining us. Pleasure as usual. Um, let's start with um, automation, can we? Um, it, it's agreed that automation, it, it's vital to automate the provisioning of, of uh, services and reduce um, times to get these services up and running. But where exactly are we today within the telecoms industry? What's the current status? Well, I, I, I think that uh, we are in, uh, let's say, at the, at the midpoint. We are probably as the, um, or the, the normal industry was probably in the 50s or so. It's, uh, it's about that we have a, a, a reasonable degree of automation. Otherwise, you know, if you look at the current networks, uh, it would be impossible to run them with a certain degree of automation. The problem with automation right now is it's at the cost of a very high complexity. And what we need precisely is to simplify this, to make uh, uh, processes much, uh, much more straightforward and, and, and requiring less, uh, less uh, dedicated and continuous human intervention. So the idea is that uh, you can go the, as, as much as we can to self-service uh, environments and uh, to simplify the way in which uh, uh, the operators can deal with, with the complexity. And what is important is that is something that we're not talking about uh, only simplifying this, it's being able to provide much more and more complex services in the future with the same effort. That's uh, the key idea I have for, for when talking about automation. So is this all more technically difficult than we originally thought, or is it, is it purely the cost of putting it into place is, is more than we thought? I think, I think there is a combination. I mean, the, uh, uh, it's, uh, you, you always uh, keep uh, hearing this about the devil and the details. When it goes to the details and it goes to uh, attending real customer demands, is something that becomes really complicated. It's uh, the tiny uh, adjustment that makes the difference between a, a, a real running service and something that is not uh, running is uh, kicking, and this is something that is complicated. Culturally, for sure. I mean, there are many processes, and this I think this is a general human uh, behavior, not only in the telco industry. When you try to change the processes, make them more agile, uh, some resistance happens, for sure. Now we're hearing a lot of talk at the moment around um, the need, certainly from, from some telcos, um, to consolidate around one single orchestration platform. Is it quite simply down to a choice of um, everyone getting around ONAP or everyone getting around open source MANO, or is, is the reality more complex than that? I don't think that the one side uh, which, uh, fits all er and everywhere. I believe that uh, keeping a certain degree of diversity is essential. Because mainly of two reasons. One is that uh, there are a wide difference between operators, and this is natural, and uh, the evolution with more automation, more softwareization, more virtualization, whatever you call it, will precisely help in the differentiating uh, operators that have converged very much in the past because of rigid architectures and all the like. This is one thing, so you have to satisfy different use cases, different society needs, different customer requirements. On the other hand, it's something that I think is uh, healthy for the industry to have simply diversity because of the sake of diversity. Diversity is good, diversity guarantees survival. If you think about it, monocultures are not good for anything. And I think that having several choices is, uh, improves you know, competition to some degree. I'm not saying that, I mean, in open source it's difficult to talk about real competition, but improves, this uh, competition improves the, uh, 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 the invention, the innovation, and, and, the, and the capacity of addressing different requirements and of uh, providing a much higher uh, resiliency in case of any problem in one of, the, uh, in one of the platforms. So I don't think it would be good in general from the industry to converge in, in a single platform. On the other hand, it's important for sure to, to converge in a single set of languages so interoperability is guaranteed. And this is something that we are, we are working in right now. I mean, the, the argument also is that um, there's a finite set of resources the, the telcos can, can put into development work. Um, so is it a case of, well, w where we have synergies, we try and overlap, and as you say, create sort of common building blocks? I think that would be desirable to, to find some uh, paths for convergence and for interoperability, and, and why not, for exchanging some of the, of the modules to, to use them in different, um, in different environments is something that makes sense. At the end, what I foresee is that we end up with a, probably a, a couple a couple of several different orchestration cores 
and a set of uh, tools that can be plugged into some of the cores or not, depending on what, the purpose, etc. And then, well, it will be up to your, your taste and your needs how to build your, your own orchestration platform. Can we move on to cloud native? Um, what is what is the current status of cloud native? And and really, what do we actually mean? Do we do, have we all consolidated around a, a definition? Uh, as far as I can tell, no. <laughs> <laughs> to me, to me, it's a little bit uh, being, being cloud native. I, I understand for since we started all these uh, move around virtualization and NFV, etc. We were claiming about precisely having a. Avoiding the uh, physical network function, which is something that is uh, simply you take a big physical thing that runs on, only on a, on, a, on a box and you make it uh, movable by uh, virtualizing and providing a huge uh, amount, uh, amount of, of software. Uh, well, if we're talking about cloud native, we're talking about this move. I mean, it's about decomposing the, uh, uh, decomposing the functionality in smaller groups that can be freely combined, etc. That has been around for since the beginning that now we start calling it cloud native because uh, the original VNS have not de de uh, delivered. Well, as a marketing name, as a catchy name can be, uh, but apart from that, I don't see, I, I had to, to sit for a while to the people that are right now talking about CNFs and, and all the like, and see where is the difference conceptually, not in implementations. I can, I can understand that they call all style VNFs whatever was produced two years ago, and then now we have to talk, start talking about CNFs to distinguish it. Well, that's a marketing tool, which can be uh, useful. I, do, I have not seen yet where the, uh, the other difference are. What about the telco cloud? What makes the, the telco cloud unique? Well, te telco cloud is a recurring uh, thing. I, I remember when I, when I joined Telefonica six years ago, people were talking about the telco clouds. And then they, uh, it was somehow forgotten, and when they started talking about uh, NFV, and then it was uh, telco cloud again. Uh, well, if we're talking about an environment in which what you need is a, is a virtualized infrastructure that is able to run network functions, and that requires a different, a different set of characteristics, uh, both in the uh, in the infrastructure itself and in the orchestration mechanisms, etc., makes sense to me. I mean, it's something that again we have been claiming from from the beginning that the uh, cloud-like infrastructure required to run uh, virtualized network functions where uh, it was not the same from the current public clouds that are oriented to endpoint services and all the like. So yeah, fine. It's uh, it's something that we have been have been around for a, for a quite a for quite a while. If we can call it a telco cloud, I'm happy again. It's uh, the concept what is important is is right. Is is all this transformation work we're seeing kind of encouraging telcos to be more open, not necessarily in open networking and open source, open standards, but more in, in, a, in a mindset, a culture, a, a looking at what other industries are doing, being more open in the services to deliver, general feeling of openness. Yes, well, I, I, I guess that is, uh, this is about uh, that you need to, I mean, it says you have to cooperate and uh, or unless you will be uh, well, the, the whole well, not the not the uh, not the whole telco concept because at the end, if you think about it, uh, the need for a, a running network is something that is currently is a is a basic uh, social uh, need. But uh, the idea of that the companies can survive and how they can survive and how they can uh, extend their, their business and make uh, better. Uh, business is, is, uh, has connect, is connected to something that, uh, well, in the, in the old days was, was not that clear, which is precisely about this idea of competition, that you can cooperate at the same time that you're competing. This is something personally, is something that I have been involved with because I have been participating in, in, in research projects that were funded by European Union and other bodies uh, worldwide, in which we were encouraged mm. to do so. I remember when we uh, were about negotiating some of the proposals and somebody telling me, no, well, you know, we are going to invite whatever the other opera uh, operator and say, well, do you have any problem with that? <laughs> it's what we do. Yeah. And we are interested in having common procedures, in having, in, in having a common understanding of how uh, the, uh, uh, the the market the, the, the technology has to has to go, then for sure we will need and this is something important as well room for differentiation. But this room for differentiation doesn't imply that you are going to f continu continuously fight mm -hmm. in all corners mm -hmm. of the of the technology. Mm -hmm. So well, it's, uh, it's something that is interesting and I think that is a sign that uh, well telcos are 
probably not as quick as they should, but uh, the telcos are adapting to the new uh, environment. Final question for you, and, and linking to this, this theme, over the next few years, we're going to hear more about the network edge and the potentials and um, uh, moving out to, to the edge. Um, how important is it that telcos work together and with the wider ecosystem and with their vendors in order to accelerate this momentum? Well, I, I, I think that the uh, network edge is uh, right now is one of the uh, main assets that uh, operators in general have. Uh, we have a highly, per, a, a highly pervasive, uh, well, <laughs> or almost covering the, the, uh, the whole territory of the, the, of the uh, countries in which we are present. And this is one of the main assets because it's a, it's a, and it's a way in which we can deploy services in a much more uh, elastic way. And uh, well, because of the nature of the infrastructure and because of the um, of the of the uh, foreseen requirements, so this is something that we are still shaping. Uh, again, cooperation is essential because at the end there are many uh, already there are many agreements among telcos that are competing, but at the same time they are cooperating in, in facilitating the deployments and facilitating the uh, uh, the, uh, the service provisioning. Uh, so it's, it's continuing with this uh, with these. Uh, um, uh, with these uh, with these uh, arrangements that were natural in that moment uh, for for uh, simplifying and um, and reducing costs, uh, well, it's simply that we are trying to change or extend the kind of services. So it's a, it's a continuing this the, the same uh, the same process and, and, and essentially, let's say. Great. Well, Diego, thank you very much for joining thank us again on Telecom TV. A pleasure. Thank you.